Thank you. Our first item of business this afternoon is time for reflection. Our time for reflection leader today is the Reverend Neil Gardner, the Minister of Canongate Kirk here in Edinburgh. As Minister of Canongate Kirk, may I take the opportunity of this first time for reflection of the new session of the Scottish Parliament, not only to congratulate you on your election, but to welcome you to the parish. Canongate is also the parish church for the Palace of Holyrood House and of Edinburgh Castle. And it's with our role as Edinburgh's military church in mind that I want to focus briefly and probably inevitably on the centenary of the Battle of Jutland, which began exactly 100 years ago today and ended 100 years ago tomorrow. The largest naval action of the First World War, it remains something of a controversial battle in that both sides claimed victory of sorts. The Royal Navy's Grand Fleet under the command of Admiral Sir John Jellicoe and based largely in Scottish waters, lost over 6,000 sailors and 14 ships out of a total of 60,000 sailors and 151 ships. While the Imperial German High Sea Fleet lost 2,500 men and 11 ships out of a total of 45,000 sailors and 99 ships. The comparative losses meant that the Germans claimed victory, but the blockade which they'd been trying to break remained in place for the rest of the war, and British domination of the North Sea remained secure. As so often when the fog and confusion of battle had lifted, questions were asked about some of the decisions taken by those in command on both sides but the bravery of certain individuals who lost their lives. On the 31st of May and on the 1st of June 1916 has always been beyond doubt. Men like Francis Harvey of the Royal Marines Light Infantry, who prevented a magazine igniting and blowing up an entire ship. Boys like John Travers Cornwall, the 16-year-old who famously remained at his post while seriously injured, but died in hospital before his mother could reach his bedside. Both of them were posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross, and it is their valor and the service and sacrifice of so many like them to which we should surely devote time for reflection today and tomorrow. 